it's three as they pick up where they left off last season and for Mike Gartner in his 14th season he's on his way already and gets it back these are full strength as Leach is back on just have the lead 3-1 see Gartner's well outside of the goal crease as Sean Burke knocks him over it was a perfect screen set up by by Mike Gartner that got the concentration away from Sean Burke Gartner battling Huda down low there They've got the sticks up. What a battle. A shot missed. Rebound score! Tony Amante does it again. And Burke's going to get an un a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Burke was all over Rob Schick. He drew the power play to set this whole play up. Now watch him plant himself outside the goal crease. Huda's got the stick up. Gardner's got the stick up. Mostly in self-defense. And finally again, unsportsmanlike conduct to Sean Burke. That shot stopped by Burke. Rebound hit the post. They dig for the rebound. It goes in. The light is on. And Joey Koser's had enough. Oh, man. And now Koser's the guy that parked himself in front here. Castles was there. And then he squares off with one of the defensemen. The goal was scored. The light was on. Whether there was a whistle or not, I don't know. I don't... But it looks like the Whalers now will have a power play as Koser will get a two-minute minor. Mm -hmm. Goalpost was hit. The Rangers continue to battle, in particular, Namchinov and then Kovalov, I think, bats the puck over the goal line. That puck would have been frozen had it not been for Namchinov's hard work to jam it loose. Patrick feeds weight. Now it's Graves battling Runner. down low against Adam Burke. The puck cleared out, and Graves and Burke go at it. Drop the glove. And Graves... Gets his right hand loose. Now he gets it jammed up in his sweater. And he's, now he's got it loose again. He is so strong. And I mean strong. You see Graves with his left hand. Just keeping Burke's right hand down and away. Now Burke tries to change hands. A lot of battles in front of the Whalers goal here in the second period. Linesman try to pry them apart. Graves looks like he wants to get in another shot. And now peace is restored. That one erupted quickly. There was some battle in front. Here it is. The Graves again outside of the goal crease. Bird battles with a stick down. Oh, and they had a little discussion. No instigator. They discussed things and decided. Hey, it's time to get at it the way they went. Wow. And Chinoff for the puck. He was taken down by Huda. The back pass to Leach. Leach run into by Conroy who came out of the penalty box and took a run at him. Another battle here. Wait goes after Conroy. Uh, there's two. And we've got another one. Uh, back by the net. There's it's two Coulter whalers. and Agnew round two. Yeah, there was two whalers on Coulter for a while. The other being Hoida. Or Huda, pardon me. Well, Graves and... Burke went for fighting at 19.01, and we'll have some more here. Now Patrick is involved. Oh, boy. In a bit of a wrestling match with Kiprios. Well, Sean Burke. Sean Burke is now out of his feet. coming out of uh -oh. that. Oh, this all hell's breaking loose now. Look at this. Mike Richter. Oh, Richter has come out to go at Burke. I don't believe this. This is a throwback, John. Yeah, it really is. And it's ugly. Rob Schick has a hold of Huda. Mike Richter in the middle. Is a twosome squared off way down in the corner. Now Sean Burke trying to rip the mask off of Mike Richter. That I believe is Patrick. Sean Burke has, has not played a controlled game at all through this game and partly responsible I think for the way his team was put into a hole by taking penalties in front. Now Richter and Burke certainly used their heads and calmed things down. And this wrestling continues here. That's Kiprios and Patrick. Now, John, as a former goaltender, well, tell me what goes through your mind when you see the opposing goaltender leave the crease. You don't want to see your team be outmanned or outnumbered anywhere, and you almost feel as if you have an obligation to your teammates to move down there and, and get involved. You can't see people on the ice get outnumbered if it's your team. Now, people, I'm sure Roger Nielsen will be criticized for putting closer on the ice. 
at the end of the period. But I'd put Koster on the ice at the end of a period. I know things have gotten rough. He's taking his regular shift. Absolutely. But I'd put Koster on the ice at the end of his shift when you know that Hartford's tried to become a much more physical team this year. Koster's job, at, even as a regular shifted person, to take care of his teammates. You saw him do it with Kovalov earlier. That's his job. That's, that's life in the world of ice hockey. Now, Richter saw Sean Burke leave the crease and join an altercation. His team is outnumbered now, so he jumps in and finds Burke. This thing was bad, but it could have been a lot worse. And the linesman and the referee did a good job of breaking it up. Burke and Richter came to their senses, and they might have been just too tired. All right. See, Here Conroy comes Conroy out of the penalty yeah, box. Out of the penalty box and nailed Brian Leach. He comes out. Leach has the puck. Leach turned, and it's not a bad hit. People say it's from behind, but Conroy had no choice. But the Rangers are going to protect their people. And wait, started that thing. Now, everybody has well, gone to the locker room. Secondary fights, you are to be ejected. Secondary altercations. Wow. And this could be, this could be major. It could be misconducts or game misconducts. John Ziegler looking on. <laughs> Mark Jansen's heading to the Hartford locker room, and now joining him will be Conroy, Agnew, Kiprios, and Muda. Now, the thing I is, say one thing. As, yeah, go ahead. somewhere, and I'm sure he's got his dish going right now, uh -huh. Don Cherry's got a smile on his face. Oh, man. <laughs> but this is something that yeah. the league wanted to get away from. Sharply. But he does take the penalty. Did Rob Schick make that move to get a better view of it? And Wow. <laughs> when, when does the bus get there? <laughs> Weinrich, Cunningworth sends it in. Cunningworth, McKenzie, and Cullen for Hartford. Bukaboom takes a hit from McKenzie. McKenzie scores! What a play! Cullen setting up big Jim McKenzie, who puts it in. McKenzie with a good shift. Oh, boy. Here's the play moving around. Big McKenzie in front finds the hole through the legs as Bukaboom couldn't get back in front to grab the opposition player. Good hit and a perfect setup oh, yeah. by McKenzie Absolutely. In front. Real nice play. Phil Bork got loose, gets to the puck. Gartner heading for the net. Bork tried to pass and was blocked. What a hit. Now you'll see Burke move across. Boom. <laughs> now that's hockey. He's joining us late. Here's Turcott shooting and it's blocked by Weinrich. Adam Graves tried to nail Cullen. Oh, Cullen, Cullen goes back, back and Graves and, and here we go. Gloves. Cullen took exception to Graven oh, no. coming out after Castles, him now. Castles goes after Graves in place of Cullen. Cullen is the best player for the Whalers. Graves came out of the penalty box and did he take a run at Craven and just grazed him. Graves wanted somebody. Graves. Now this is a, a case, I don't know if, well, let's see. Uh, now. Jay Wells is working Wells over the Petrovitsky. rookie. Petrovitsky. Yeah, Wells is working right over. We have not had an instigator penalty of, among any of the fights in the NHL this season. Graves is going off, and he's done for the night. Graves went out to hit somebody. It would, would have been a legal check, I think, from what I saw. I think Cullen, I, I don't know for oh. sure. I have to wait to see the replay, but I don't know if Cullen, in avoiding it, and if Graves Cullen, stuck out his leg. Cullen's got a battle for himself. He's coming off back surgery. He was rattled in Boston along the boards, and his teammates got to protect him. He's off of back surgery, and he's their best player. Now, here's how it all began. Craven up the middle. Cullen has the puck. Ah, oh, Graves tried to throw a body check. The arm came up, but he missed him. I mean, that's his job. He came out of the penalty box. He tried to throw a hit. Petrovitsky went down, but, I mean, that's Graves' job. He started to, to try and take care of the front of their net and got far too carried away taking penalties, and then the temper has just exploded. The roar in the <laughs> crowd was when this man's face was put up on the Garden Vision board. Ty Domi. He, moves back. he, he wants the blades. And a whistle stops play. And we've got a cross-checking penalty. Chris King is separated. Uh, and now Kiprios involved with Hardy. Sorella with Verbeek. Might have been King who was getting the original as he's already yeah. been pushed to the penalty box. Ushered over by Dan McCourt. 
It was a cross-checking call coming up with 18.1 seconds remaining here. I think it'll be kind of just to uh, let's get out of this thing now. This game has taken a long oh, time. Close to three hours. Chris King for cross-checking. Kiprios played with Philadelphia and Washington. Interesting to see what Washington does. They traded away big, strong forwards like Kiprios, and they have more skilled players, but they're not nearly as strong a team along the boards nor in front of their net to this point. It'll be interesting to see how their season moves along. They have a fight now on the far oh, side man. of the ice, and enough's enough Bukabu already. And, and Kiprios. Kiprios. and now the linesman will try and pry them apart. Kiprios trying to get in. Kiprio still with his right hand free, trying to get something going. Now they're pulled apart. Bukaboom yelling at the Whalers bench. It's really turned uh, yeah, this a is, little ugly. It's getting to just, this is, it's being dragged out. Get into the point where I even hear a few, a few boos after the last one. Enough already. Let's, let's get out of here. And Jeff Bukaboom heads for the locker room. 14.3 seconds remaining. A late night for those young men. I don't know what's cheaper. Price of admission or the babysitter? <laughs> Ah, the kids are still awake and there's some smiles as they see themselves up on the garden vision. King for cross-checking at 1941. At 1945, Pukaboom and Kiprios, five minutes each for fighting. Whalers are on their seventh power play in the game. They're 0 for 6. Coasters on the ice. Nemchinov, Wells, and Sorella as the Rangers put some of their big defensemen out. Schick now talking things over with Roger Nielsen. And Buda and Burks, a couple of big I boys. I Jansen. think he's, he's pointing to Koser yeah. and, and See, perhaps. Yeah, but Roger Nielsen has to react to what the other team puts on the ice first, and that's Hartford's decision. The home team puts their players on last. And I think Schick is being very aware here of who's on the ice. He doesn't want to see any junk. Neither do I. Well, but you can't put your skill players out there after the other team puts their big boys. It just doesn't make sense. You try to neutralize it here, and hopefully it'll be neutralized. McKenzie oh, I like this. Roger Nielsen took Koser off and put Messier in a spot. I think players will have respect for Messier, and hopefully nothing will happen here. Oh, oh McKenzie, McKenzie wants Wells. Wells. McKenzie dropped his gloves oh, already. Man, this is silly. Oh, geez. McKenzie's a brawler, too, and here we go. And now everybody's and McKenzie in. McKenzie started this whole thing. This may go back to earlier, though, when Wells was... Remember during a, 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 an incident, Wells was working over the young kid, the rookie? Petrovitsky. Right. And so this may be why McKenzie went over there, but... I mean, McKenzie was, there was no doubt he started this thing. Absolutely no doubt. And it looks like it's stopping quickly, thank goodness. Now, 10.2 seconds remaining. Just get it done already. I hear you. Let's see other players had enough sense. See, my to, to feeling, John... And, and I and I know we've we've had disagreements on positions and we go back and forth about this fighting issue But I think you know if you if you had the power to eject players to begin with in that first uh, Altercation that maybe this this wouldn't have happened. Maybe it wouldn't what's, have been the brawl you mean? Yeah late in the second period but Who, if, who, if would, players you, who had been would you eject in that situation though? Because well, there wasn't really a brawl. I mean there was a bunch of of players that got together, but they didn't fight and, and, and go crazy. It was it was bad enough as it was, and I, yeah. I agree to an extent. But how do you how do you try to decide who to throw out? Listen, the, the NHL had a chance to make a very strong ruling. Yep. If you fight, you're out. They decided not to. And obviously, through this game, there's been some bad blood and it hasn't worked. 